Now, electricity is ubiquitous in our culture, right? We use it every day. Uh, you can't imagine a life without electricity, even if you're an outdoors person, likes to get away, camping, hiking out in the middle of nowhere, you still might want to take your Kindle with you to read some books or a flashlight so you can go to the bathroom at night and not stumble across a bear. Uh, you know, electricity is still used. Uh, very few people go without using electricity. So electricity is so incredibly useful, but it also can be very dangerous if not handled properly. So if you ever have to do electrical work on your own, for example, if you own a house, I strongly urge you to hire an expert, right? An electrician who knows safety code, knows how to handle things. Don't rewire things in your house yourself, mainly because while you might read up on it, how to do it online, you might read up in books, you think you have it down, the person before you who worked on your house might have screwed up something. So all of those safety manuals that talk about how to install an outlet or how to install a light switch, assume that the person who put it in there in the first place knew what they were doing. And that's not always the case. So electricity, don't mess around with it. Now, the main thing you have to worry about with electricity is a shock hazard. That's when electric current passes through a person. Now, you are a large bag of salt water. Basically, right? You are a lot of fluid. Uh, the, your blood and other fluids in your body have sort of a salt content. I mean, if you cry, you have salt in your tears, right? So you are a conductor of electricity. Now, your skin is actually a pretty good resistor. So, for example, if you hold two wires of different potential, chances are there's not much current that's going to flow through your body because your skin is a decent resistor. If you poke your cells with that and it goes through your blood system, then it's actually a conductor. Now, shock hazards can be harmless. You could be, you know, holding two ends of a AA, check wires to a AA battery, hold each end of the AA battery, you're not gonna feel anything. Put your finger across the two terminals of a nine volt, you're not going to feel anything, right? It'll be basically harmless. Lick a nine volt, you'll feel something. You'll have charge there. Your tongue will be numb, it will hurt. A large enough potential, not just a nine volt, but for example, the 10,000 volt power lines overhead, go up there, grab two power lines of different potential, it will be lethal. Another issue you have to worry about when electricity passes through an object is that electricity deposits power. If that object has resistance, right, as current flows through a resistor, it gives off power. P is I squared over R, R, R times, I squared times R. So depending on how much current goes through that person, depending on the resistance of that person or material, that material will heat up. So it will cause burns. So when you get electrocuted, it's not just a shock hazard, you also can experience burns. Those burns, those materials can cause the material to heat up and actually catch fire. You can YouTube videos on how to cook a pickle with electricity or how to cook a potato with electricity. Pickle is probably the more famous example. Using two alternating current you know, wires out of your positive and negative terminal in your house, stick them on the ends of a pickle, the current that goes through the pickle will cook the pickle. Do not try that at home because you will probably electrocute yourself. It's not worth the risk. But thermal hazards are if you have what's called a short circuit in your house. And a short circuit is just basically a low resistance path for electricity to flow from two terminals in an outlet. So for example, if you plug in your hair dryer and your hair dryer is off, the circuit is open, no charge flows through your hair dryer from the positive and negative terminals of your outlet in your house. Think of the outlet next to your sink in the bathroom. Now, when you turn your hair dryer on, charge flows from one to the other through your hair dryer, warming it up, you know, as long as you turn it down, or your uh, electric toothbrush, or your, you know, curler, whatever you want to use that uses power in the bathroom. Now, if there's a short circuit in the hair dryer, 
charge doesn't flow through the coils of the hair dryer. It can flow in and directly out to the hair dryer, dropping the resistance level significantly, causing a lot of current to go through, right? The power supplied across the resistive element is the V squared over R. So if R drops, if you reduce the resistance value in a circuit considerably at a given voltage, the power will shoot up. The age old example is taking a paper clip and sticking it in an outlet, right? Don't do that ever, but that is a short circuit. Power will quickly flow from one element to the other through the paper clip, which is a very low resistance. That short circuit will generate an incredible amount of heat. You'll probably melt the paper clip if you don't trip a breaker or blow the fuse in your house. Again, do not try this at home. Short circuits are bad, very bad. You can cause melting and insulation issues. The wires in your house are only designed to have a certain amount of current flow through them. You can buy different gauges of wire. If you go to Home Depot or, or Menards, go to their electronics section or the, where they have the wiring, and you can see household wiring. There is 14 gauge, 16 gauge wire, 12 gauge, 6 gauge. If you ever buy an extension cord, those are also the gauges you can buy extension cords in. The smaller the gauge, the more electricity that cord can handle. So a 12 gauge extension cord can handle a lot more power than a 16 gauge. Most wire in your house is 16 gauge. Most ex basic cheap extension cords are 16 gauge wire. That holds about 15 amps of current. If you put more than 15 amps of current through that wire, the chances are you can melt, the wire will heat up and melt the insulation, causing fire hazard. The wires in your house are mostly 16 gauge wire. So you can't pull more than 15 amps through those wires of your house without potentially causing a fire hazard. Objects in your house that draw more current, like your stove, like your air conditioner, if you have central air, or if you have electric, you know, um, electric baseboard heat, those devices that pull a lot of electricity have thicker wire, lower gauge wire, so they can safely draw that larger amount of current. So when you're buying an extension cord, think about what is that extension cord powering. If that extension cord, if you're taking it outside and you're gonna put plug out your outdoor Christmas lights into that extension cord and your snow machine, and you know, you're know you gonna do some yard work and you have your, uh, you're charging your lawnmower that's a plug-in version and you're charging your Tesla car and plug it all into that small extension cord, you're gonna melt the cord of that extension cord if the fuse doesn't blow first. Now fuses, are designed to intentionally melt. Most of us don't have fuses anymore, or if they do, it's in some subset of the house. Older houses, like for example, my garage still has a fuse box. Uh, a relative with a cabin up north still has fuses. Fuses are basically resistors, little conductors, that melt if you put a certain amount of current through them. So they melt and, open and break the circuit before the wires in your wall melt and start a fire. That's the purpose behind a fuse. So if you blow a fuse, if a fuse melts, do not just remove it and put in a new fuse because that will complete the circuit. More the current that was running through there is going to run through there again and melt the second fuse. If a fuse melts, there's, you have too much power on that circuit or you have a short circuit somewhere. Fix it before you replace the fuse. Do not use a fuse that's not rated properly, right? Don't put a 30 amp fuse when you should be using a 15 amp because fuses are designed to melt before the wires in your house. If you put too big a fuse in, an improper fuse, that fuse will keep the current going past the safety recommendations for the wiring in your house and the wires in your house, will, the insulation will melt before the fuse does and that's bad, right? That's an electrical fire. Most modern houses have circuit breakers. Circuit breakers, like fuses, are designed to fail after a certain current threshold to protect the wiring of your house. However, circuit breakers are easily reset. You just basically flip the, turn the breaker off, turn the breaker back on, and it's re-engaged. But again, find out why the breaker tripped in the first place. 
If you turn the breaker back on and it immediately flips back off, something is wrong. You need to call an electrician or someone with expertise to come in and fix it. Or you might just realize, oh, I was running 10 hair dryers at once. Maybe I shouldn't do that. And finally, a new safety feature, I don't think your book really talks about this, um, called GFCI. Uh, current code has any outlet near a sink, a uh, bathroom or a kitchen sink, or anywhere where there's water, has to have a GFCI circuit. And you probably recognize these circuits because they have the little test and reset buttons between the outlets. These are designed to trip like a circuit breaker if the circuit detects that the electricity coming out of the circuit isn't the same as the electricity going into the circuit, right? The idea is if you decide to, for some stupid reason, shower while you're blowing your hair dry and you get electrocuted, those circuits are designed to try to prevent that from happening. It's not a 100% safety proof feature. Do not shower while drying your hair or listening to the radio plugged into the wall. The electricity likes to take the easiest way from one outlet to another. So if you're working with electricity, let's say you're replacing a light bulb and you accidentally touch, you didn't turn the light off, and you accidentally touch the side of the interior of the light switch uh, where the light bulb plugs in. Depending on how you're standing and where you're standing, you can get electrocuted. The current will go through the light bulb outlet into your finger, through your body, up your feet, if you're standing in a puddle or you're standing near you know, some other conductive surface. So electricians tend to insulate themselves to prevent that from happening. Thick rubber boots, you know, using not metal ladders, but fiberglass ladders so there's no conduction there. Just be safe and smart. Don't play around electricity. Now, electricity, your body is bioelectrical, right? The, you, your brain sends electrical signals through your nervous system to activate muscles and so on. So if you do electrocute yourself, if you find out your situation where you're getting shocked, where you're experiencing a shock hazard. Different things can happen. Sometimes they can be harmless. You won't even notice you're being shocked at low voltage or low current. At slightly higher current, between one and 100 milliamps of current. Remember, circuits in your house are designed to take amps of current. So this is 100 thousandths of an amp, so 0.1 amps maximum. There'll be sensation. You'll feel you're being shocked from one to 100 milliamps about you'll feel that something's wrong. Uh, it can be anywhere from a mild tickling sensation to pain, right? You actually experience pain. Between 100 and 300 milliamps, depending on how the current goes through your body, you can actually affect your heart. So for example, let's say you're working on an electric circuit with two hands, current can flow up one circuit across your chest, uh, up one arm across your chest, down your other arm. Since the current is flowing through your heart, across your heart, 100 to 300 milliamps is enough to affect the electrical behavior of your heart. You can enter what's called um, ventricular fibrillation. Uh, it'll start messing up your heartbeat. The way your heartbeat works, very complicated, but an electrical pulse basically goes through the muscle so your muscles contract together. If that gets screwed up, different parts of your heart muscle will start contracting at different times, meaning your heart won't pump correctly and might stop pumping completely. You can kill yourself if you have too much current go past your heart. Right? 300 plus milliamps can still kill you if it goes across your heart, but it'll start to burn you. Like for instance, let's say you're working with just one hand, you're smart and only working with one hand on an electrical circuit, but your two fingers touch different voltages. Well, then the current will run across your hand and you can get skin burns. Or think about lightning, or, you know, someone getting struck by lightning. As that current flows through them, they get severe burns. And uh, above six amps, uh, basically you can get serious heart issues. Uh, the defibrillators often use that amount of current because if the current is used properly, you basically reset the heart and let it start pumping properly again. Um, that's what those defibrillators are for, to reset the heart rhythm. They are not, as they are often depicted, to bring back someone who doesn't have a heartbeat. Um, so be very careful around uh, electrical power lines. The voltages in your house are about 120, 110 to 120 volts. Um, for air conditioning units, central air units, uh, stoves and things like that, it might be 220 volts. Those 
voltages are dangerous. You can shock yourself, you can die using even those small volt, uh, lower voltages. Thousands of volts definitely becomes an issue. Um, a few volts, well, it depends, right? Again, licking a nine volt battery is not going to kill you. But also that's direct current. Alternating current is more dangerous than direct current is. So just be cautious when using, you know, around electric circuits, be smart. Uh, if there's a problem with the electricity in your house, circuits in your house, don't mess around with it, call an expert.